Well, these solar generators just keep coming out of the woodworks and the Growatt Infinity 1500 is one of them and there are even still many more coming to market. This one's actually a really good price. The price you pay for the unit wattage is very low and so I wanted to review this for you guys so that way you have this option on the table. It is in the comparison chart which I'll have a link down below this video. If you click that link, it's gonna take you to my live updated solar generator comparison chart, which is gonna show you all of the specs on this unit as well as all the other comparative units. And then as well, it splits up into different size comparisons. That way you're not comparing this to something like a Delta Max, which is bigger than this, or even something like a Delta Pro, or a Titan or MPS3K or anything like that. So stick around for this full review of the Growatt Infinity 1500. It's pretty surprising what it can do, but there may be some limitations and that's what we're gonna show in this video. So stick around, it's gonna be good. So what comes with the box is quite simple. I've got my Growatt Infinity 1500. Now, if you guys aren't familiar with Growatt, they've been around for a long time. They make some very, very high quality inverters and equipment. And so I was actually really excited to see them come out with a solar generator. Now I've had this for a few weeks now and I've been testing it here and there and it has done pretty well. I, I am actually pretty happy with it. There are some things to be aware of. For example, the inverter comes preset at 1800 watts output, even though here on these four AC outlets, it says 2000 watts. So if you're trying to run more than 1800 watts, you actually have to go into the settings and adjust that. It does have an app so you can make adjustments like that. So you have to connect to the app through your phone onto this and make those adjustments. The screen itself is very simple. Basically just shows how much output and how much input, the total battery percentage, and it gives you a little bit more information when you're discharging, charging, and stuff like that. And I'm gonna show you that here in a minute. It's got a wireless phone charging or tablet charging uh, base here up top. It's got four USB-A, two USB-C, four AC or wall outlets essentially right there, rated out to 2000 watts output. The wall charger is nice that it's built in. I don't have a big power brick on the wall charging cable. So it's all internal right here. It uses an XT60 adapter and it comes with a car charger. If you ever do that, I think that's become obsolete. Uh, and then as well, an XT60 to MC4 adapter right here, as well as the user manual. And that is pretty much it. Now it's a 1,512 watt hour battery. Internally, it is lithium NMC, which is just lithium ion, which means you're gonna get about 800 cycles out of it. But in the manual, it does say that you can connect up to three of these together to increase the battery capacity, but nowhere on their website or the manual does it say that that allows you to increase the inverter output capacity. So I'm pretty sure it doesn't do that or either the solar input capacity. It seems to be that you have one master unit up to two slave units and the master unit is the only one that can handle all of the output and solar input. So you can only expand the battery on this, but that is a cool feature. The expandability of it alone actually moves it into the middle cap class of the solar generators. Otherwise by itself, it's just a light cap solar generator. Now, one of the things that I do like about it is this was one of the few solar generators where the solar input parameter is 12 to 100 volts and 12 amps, which is actually pretty decent for a solar generator this size. Oftentimes they're like 12 to 60 volts and up to 10 amps. And so they went with a little bit bigger MPPT charge controller and that does make a difference. And it's rated to 800 watts input. And we're gonna test that shortly where I put 800 watts onto this and we're gonna see if it can actually handle all of that voltage and amperage going into it. Now, this comes in at $12.99 as far as the price. And so when you factor in the inverter capability, the battery capability and the solar capability, mixing all three of those data points together, this comes out to $1.04 per unit wattage. I don't measure just based on the battery capacity because that's only one third of a solar generator. So factoring in everything, this is actually one of the best priced solar generators for its size, but it may or may not be big enough for what you need. So the first thing we're gonna do is take this and do a load test to see if it can truly output its maximum rated capacity from the inverter. And then we'll recharge it off of solar and just see how that goes. So what I've already got going here is a heat gun. It's running at 1500 watts. And so what we're actually gonna do is a 1500 watt draw because this is about a 1500 watt hour battery. So that means we're gonna be discharging at a 1C rate because the battery capacity and the inverter output are gonna be basically the same. Now, normally you're not gonna be running 1500 watts consistently, so you will get a better energy efficiency out of the system when you're not running it at such a high load. Now, you may have also noticed that I've got a Delta Pro, I've got an AC500, I've got an MPS3K, I've got a Titan, I've also got a Delta Max, I've got a Pecron, I've got other EcoFlow units, other Blue Eddy units, 
I've got Ace Volt, I've got a bunch of systems, not to mention that my one of my next videos coming out is the Zender Super Bass Pro, which uh, looks to be a really cool unit, as well as I've got an Apollo solar generator on the way. So you can see I do review a lot of solar generators, so if you're new to the channel, you may consider subscribing, just because I review this stuff constantly, and you want to know how these systems compare. But you can go to PoweredPortableSolar.com, and you can actually see which kits I recommend, the ones that I would personally use for myself and my family since I test all of these items personally. Or if you just have some questions and need some help or guidance, shoot me an email to info at poweredportablesolar.com and I'd be happy to help you out. So basically it went for 48 minutes, which is actually pretty impressive because that puts it right at an 80% efficiency rate doing a one seed discharge. So now this has to cool off for a bit. It doesn't feel warm at all, but with my experience in using solar generators like this, they need even a couple of hours sometimes to cool off just to make sure that it can start recharging because when it's too warm inside, it won't allow for a charge to go in or sometimes it'll just make the entire system shut down and that can be a little problematic. So I'm gonna let this cool off for a bit and then I'll connect the solar panels and see how well it does there. So this is my solar cable right here. I've got five 200 watt solar panels. So that's actually a thousand watts. And as long as we're below hundred volts, when we were at 99.1, then we're within the hundred volt charge parameter. So I'm gonna go ahead and connect this up and this should technically be over paneled, not really by much. So we'll just see how well it does here. We have some really good sun right now. It's partly cloudy today. So we'll see how this does. Sometimes it's really hard with the weather to figure out exactly what the real input is. Right now we're getting 535 watts. So that's pretty decent. So if we were able to sustain this, we'd definitely be able to charge in three hours or less. With it having an 800 watt solar input, if we can actually get 800 watts to go in, and this whole thing charges in just a little over two hours, which is pretty impressive. Now this does have a UPS feature and it's an automatic feature where basically you plug in the wall charger. So I've got a wall charger right here, plug it in and it will automatically go into UPS mode as soon as I plug something else into it. So I just turned on the AC power. It says UPS mode right here. We've got 384 watts going in between AC power, or wall power and solar power. I'm gonna turn this on turns right on and it says we're drawing 80 watts we we'll turn this up higher so the input went up as well and the input seems to be higher to be able to offset the output so if we were to combine what the input was which was close to 700 watts before i turned this on and now this is currently outputting about 700 watts we're getting about 1400 watts to go into that so that's a pretty interesting feature for the ups that it's basically adding that much of the output to the input to make sure it can cover it. Let me go ahead and put this up all the way on high. So the input is now 2100 watts and the output is 1400 watts. So that's pretty impressive that it can keep the input going with such a high load on it. That's a really, really nice UPS feature. Really one of the coolest things about that is we're still charging up even though this is running a really heavy load. That's very impressive. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this all the way down and our input goes back down to about 800 watts. So yeah, the UPS feature 100% works. Let me see if it has pass-through charging, which is DC or basically solar power only. And now I'm gonna turn this on. Got this on medium. So we got 450 watts going in, about 700 watts going out. So it's actually discharging right now. And so the solar and battery are working together in order to keep this running. And because I have the solar panels connected, it would extend the runtime of running a load like this pretty easily. So this would be a really good thing to use, for example, on a refrigerator where, where you can have the refrigerator plugged into this all of the time. And then if the power goes out, this will already be at 100% and it will continue to run the fridge for probably about 12 to 15 hours, depending on how much power your fridge is gonna be using. So the fact that it has an 80% efficient inverter at a high load is impressive. The UPS works well, the pass-through charging works well. Uh, I can't really do anything about the weather. It's supposed to be partially cloudy for the next two weeks. So I, this is basically as good as it's going to get for testing the solar. Uh, we've seen it get up to about 550. And so we know we can at least do that. But maybe in ideal conditions, it would do much better. Uh, the fact that I was able to connect five 200 watt panels 
does mean that this is over paneled, but it can't really over panel very easily. Overall, I think it's a good quality unit. I don't know that there's a huge use for it in the sense that I would use it for emergency preparedness, simply for the fact that it has kind of a medium to small size battery compared to other solar generators right now. The inverter is great, 2000 watts is plenty to be able to run your basics. The issue is like something just like one fridge and one freezer, this would have trouble lasting through the whole night. And then the ability to recharge off solar the next day while still running the fridge and freezer may be a little complicated simply because this is gonna be fully drained. So you'd really, really have to get more solar input in order for it to be capable of doing that. So quality is good. Practicality, I'm not so sure. It almost seems like you would need a second unit to have the extra battery capacity. So that way you would be able to last through the whole night with your fridge and freezer. But then the other issue is that you can only have the solar panels on the main unit from my understanding, I could be wrong, but that's not gonna be enough to recharge both systems in a single day, most likely, depending on the weather conditions. That's while you were running the fridge and freezer. So yeah, it's good quality, but I expect GrowWatt probably to come out with some other equipment that'll be bigger and more powerful than this. The application I see for this could definitely be something like just UPS power on the go. Uh, maybe something like in a van life setup. Uh, other than that, I probably wouldn't use it personally simply for the fact that it's not expandable enough for my emergency power needs but it 100% is a good quality product. So in that sense, I can give it a thumbs up, but I don't know that I could recommend it outside of maybe running just a refrigerator and some phones and radios or something like that during an emergency. So that's the review. I hope you found it helpful. Don't forget to check out poweredportablesolar.com and get prepared. Now is one of the best times to be prepared because one thing's for sure is we're getting more and more people in our population and we have less and less power available to those people. All of our power needs are growing, but all of our power production capabilities are shrinking. Very seriously, over the next couple of decades, we're gonna see some major power issues simply for the fact that the people need more power. And because of the transition time it takes to go from coal to renewable energy and all of that stuff that's being pushed by the government, it's just going to cause a lot of more continual blackouts and brownouts and stuff like that for people. So having a system, whether it's like a grow watt for a basic simple fridge setup or a Titan or an MPS 3K or Delta Pro AC 500, all those other units, you need to have some form of backup power. And I personally prefer solar because the sun's not gonna run out anytime soon. And then I have a gas generator to back up my solar generator. So go to poweredportablesolar.com. If you have questions about those kits or shoot me an email to info at poweredportablesolar.com. Be prepared. I will see you guys in the next video.